Welcome, you pedal nerds. We're looking at one of the new UA pedals. UA had the uh, Astra Golden Reverberator Starlight Delay. Then one, two, three different pedal modeler pedals, which are brilliant. And now they are uh, gracing us with the presence of the Galaxy, which is the uh, Roland Space Delay kind of in a pedal, and it's brilliant. Uh, then a delay and reverb combination called the Delburb, and now something very special, a compressor. And you'd be like, wow, a compressor is boring. Yeah, but it's UA, so it's a UA compressor, which means from the people that for the last over 20 years have brought us the best uh, emulations, digital simulations of compressors on the market. Now, before we show you the pedal, let me tell you a couple things. I have worked with the UA compressors in digital form since 2001, since the U81 through the U82, now through satellites and Apollos, now in Spark form. Spark is their native version of the plugins. And if you're looking for uh, recreations of vintage gear in the best form possible, get the freaking Spark stuff. It's ridiculous. They're not paying me to save this. They're paying me to make this video, but they don't even know I'm talking about Spark. Spark is amazing. For €12.50 a month, if you do the uh, yearly subscription, you can get amazing instruments, virtual instruments, but also LA2A, 1176, API shit, loads of other stuff. But really, that LA2A and that uh, 1176 is really what you need. Now they have that quality of modeling or whatever you want to call it um, in a pedal for us guitar players to actually throw on the board. So yes, it is fully digital, but yes, it's also really good. Now, on that pedal is also a preamp. It's not a guitar preamp. It is actually a, let's call it mic preamp, but it's one of the most coveted preamps in the industry. Really, 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 really old shit. It is the 610 preamp. And I'm going to show you right here how, where it is in my rack because I've recorded countless albums with a, a hardware combination of the 610, which really is just a big knob for gain. But then, of course, you know, you don't really want it to drive when it, you're recording vocals. Maybe just a bit of that tube goodness. And then there's a low shelf and a high shelf in terms of EQ, which is also possible in the pedal. But then in the 6176 rack, you can see on the other side a version of the 1176. And I've recorded, again, countless records with that, with Sebastian Bach from Skid Row, Michael Sattler from Saga, James Debris, and all these people have sung through that unit. I said unit. Now, I am very familiar with this hardware. I'm extremely familiar with the software of the LA2A. And then also in it is the Dynacomp, which is a very simple pedal compressor. And let me tell you the story of this one. About 12 years ago, I guess, I wanted to buy a compressor to play some country stuff. And then I looked up what is the compressor that everyone kind of should use if you're playing country stuff. And it was the Dynacomp. So I ordered this very pedal at Toman had a couple of bucks left and thought, let's order something else. Let's buy some more pedals. I don't have a lot of pedals. And then I ordered two Harley Benton pedals. They arrived and I was very impressed by them. I put this away. Never really thought about it again. UPS brought things. What did UPS bring? Ooh, the 1987 from All Pedals. I think it's called All Pedals, and they sent something else which I didn't order. Macrodose envelope filter. Who doesn't need a Macrodose envelope filter? All Pedals, coming up on the channel here. So, I put this away and played with the Harley Benton pedals, thought they were amazing, and thought, let's make a video about this. I don't know if there's videos about pedals on YouTube, I had no idea. It was a long time ago. And it literally, buying this, started the channel. This is why I now am here and why beautiful people like Vanessa Jung is sitting next to me uh, playing a beautiful bola and um, just sitting there when, whenever I need stunt guitar. So this is my story of the Dynacomp. I owe this my career as an influencer, even though there was never actually a video about this. So thank you. Dynacomp. And now it's in digital form in this pedal. 
long story short, it's this is this is a lot of my career as a musician. Dynacom started the channel. LHUA is on vocals and bass in every single mix I do. 1176, I have in the rack, I have a uh, 4710D, which has four 1176s built in. Uh, the 1176 is now in the Volt interfaces in a very simple version, which uh, I'm going to cover. In this preamp, literally in its hardware rack version, is on countless of my albums. So this is, this is me in a box in a way. It's digital in the back. It's fully stereo, so you can go, I mean, nothing is stereo created, but you can go in stereo and go out stereo, um, so your stereo effects can be fully treated. There's a, a pairing button for Bluetooth, which we don't really need because it apparently pairs by itself, and there's USB-C at the bottom. Now, the USB-C makes you able to connect to the UA Connect uh, app on your desktop, and that really only helps you register it. But in the UA app, you actually also administer your Spark plugins, which is very cool. Now, it also is where you have see and uh, register your UA Volt interfaces and now also the pedals. So it's a one-stop location for all your UA goodness. Setting up the pedal, you do in the phone app, but you don't do in the other one. But you also don't register it in the phone app. It, it, why not have both do everything, I don't know. So talking about that, talking about the phone app, it's actually connecting to the pedal rather easily. Let's see, it's still connected. I'm, I'm amazed by that, really amazed. So here, this is what the app looks like. Oh, come here. So there's three different, three, there's, there's, there's three different modes that you can set up. Oh, I didn't tell you, this pedal is two compressors, comp one, comp two. So yeah, it's, it's literally, uh, this side, Dyna LA2A or, or 1176, and then again, Dyna 1176, and you can switch between those two, but you don't necessarily have to, and uh, it's two at the same time. So are those two, comp one and two, in serial, not the morning serial, you know, so are they behind each other to run two compressors, uh, which is ridiculous, but you can, or in parallel, so you run one and then the other, but you could also actually have one off. So run them in parallel, have one off, and then you're running parallel compression, if you wanted that. And then exclusive, which means if this one is on and you're clicking on this, this one turns off. So it's either or, which is probably the mode that makes the most sense. Um, and I'm going to talk about another mode in a sec that I think they might uh, implement because we talked about it and they were very uh, excited about this. And Tora already had the same idea. Look, floppy disk. And then, which is very cool, you can actually set up, well, sidechain for the 1176 for either of the two, but then either of the two also have the preamp attached and you can actually say uh, which, uh, how you want that shelf to be set up. Uh, plus minus six dB on the low EQ and minus six and uh, plus six or plus three on the high EQ. And you can do that for each of the two. So that all you do in the app, which is actually pretty damn nifty. So I'm going to keep that open for later. Another mode that they're working on, it's not implemented yet, but which makes total sense. Since the pedal is in stereo, full stereo, you could actually apply one compressor to input one and output one and the other one input two and output two, meaning you'll be able to run both of them at the same time, but independently in your signal chain. So if you have a looper switcher, have one before everything, one behind everything, or you could have guitar running through one, bass run, running through the other. If there's two independent DSPs and two independent ins and outs, why not have that mode? And we talked about it and they said, of course, and it makes total sense. Um, they already had the same idea. When and if that is going to be implemented, I don't know, but it makes a lot of sense to make this a very, very, very useful box. It is clocking in at slightly under 400 bucks, which is quite a bit for a compressor, but it's also preamp and it's also two compressors. So stop your whining and if you like it, then you like it and you buy it. So we're going to go, what are we going to do? Well, the LA2A really only has an input, which would be your threshold. It says comp. So on the LA2A and the 1176, you actually don't have a threshold. You're adding gain on the input, 
pushing the level closer to the threshold. Therefore, it's kind of like behaving like a threshold control. The LA2A does not have a attack and release. However, on this one, let me see, it has a release knob. How did I just find out? Okay, if a knob doesn't have a function, this actually flickers. See this? So this works. And it looks like you actually have more uh, options on the LA2A than you actually have on the real LA2A when it comes to uh, ratio. But on the Dynacomp, which has two knobs, you actually only have two knobs. These two. So you see attack, it flickers. Ratio, it flickers. Release, it flickers. It's simply telling you nothing's going to happen when you twist those knobs. So the Dynacomp literally is this. If you have both of them on at the same time, serial, now we can do that. So if you have one on, these controls will be for this. If you have this one on, these controls will be for the uh, right side. So no flicking switch is necessary. If you have both on at the same time, this tells you which one you're controlling. Okay, very simple. That's what that switch is for. Have I forgotten anything? No, let's check out some sounds and then um, we're done. This is the history of compression in a pedal. What else do you want? We're going to get a clean sound from Vanessa and then I'll start fiddling with the Dynacom settings. So the light right here shows you in red, orange, or green, whether you're above, kind of around, or under the threshold. If you're hearing a lot of noise while well, we're in a studio with massive lights and screens and nine cameras on, um, there's a lot of interference here. This is not the pedal, trust me. There's nothing I can do about it. That's just what happens. And obviously with the compressor that's even uh, exacerbated, I learned words. I have a, on my toilet paper every day there's a new word today was exacerbated by the fact that a compressor makes quiet shit louder. So why would you even want a compressor? Okay, so you have these spiky things that Vanessa is playing. It's like these really spiky attacks and they're very loud. But then all the quiet shit that happens later in the signal gets very quiet. Now, instead, if you want to crank up the volume on everything, what happens is those transients, those loud bits in the clean signal, they will be very loud and they will kill you and they will kill your mix and everything. So what we're doing is we're saying as soon as you get above a certain volume, anything above this volume right here, everything up here is going to be triggering the compressor. And that volume right here where the compressor starts working is called the threshold, which you set here. Then once we hit that threshold, everything above it will be output quieter than it actually is. Well, how much quieter? Very simple, by a certain ratio. So 4 to 1, there's no 2 to 1 here. 2 to <laughs> 2 to 1. So 4 to 1 means for every 4 dB that, I, that she gets louder, we're actually only giving out 1 dB. So for um, every 8 dB, we're only giving out 2 dB. So it's still getting louder, but not as much as she's actually getting louder. Okay. And if we go to, you know, 20, well, obviously for every 20 dB, we only get out 1 dB. You get the idea. And all mode is when you push in all knobs on the 1176, which had a very special kind of like super compression, totally cool thing for vocals. That's what, she, what I actually used. So this is what a ratio does. Well, actually not on, as you can see, it flickers, not on the Dynacom. But that's what the ratio will do. And then what happens is you're taming those really, really loud bits, which means now we can crank up the overall volume because my loud bits are actually not that loud anymore. Okay. And now we can crank up everything, which will lead to all the quiet stuff 
actually being more audible because we made the whole thing louder because we controlled the loud stuff. And that is why bass players uh, love it. That's why you use it on, on acoustic guitar. That's why you use it on vocal. That's why you use it on uh, electric guitar when it's clean because now you can get the quiet bits louder and that will result in a perceived thickness because all the quiet stuff gets louder. So all the details get louder and it sounds thicker, but also it sounds like there's more sustain because sustain is like loud and then quiet and it's gone and we can barely hear it anymore. But if the, if the loud's not so loud anymore and it's here and we get everything up, then all of a sudden this quiet stuff you hear is here. We made the quiet shit louder. Therefore, our sustain sounds longer. When in reality, it's not. All we did is we made it louder. And we're going to illustrate that by Vanessa playing a chord and letting it ring without the compressor. And now with the compressor. But that also means we really crank up the noise that I have here in the studio for reasons that we don't understand. That's what happens. And and the Dynacomp, of course, is uh, very simple. You've got compression and output, and that's it. Let's go to the LA2A right here. And go with this. I'll play. And now the 1176, where we have attack and release. Now, if I go into these, uh, the video is going to be for, you know, lasting forever. Let me quickly say, attack simply means once it hits the threshold, how quickly does the compressor do this? Well, if the attack's a little bit longer, it'll trigger the threshold and then wait a little bit so that your transient isn't squished. It's still there. But then right after the transient, however long you set the attack, it'll squish it and then make it louder. So you still have the natural, you know, spankiness, but you have the beautiful sustain and compression happening. And releases, uh, as soon as it goes, the signal goes under the threshold, how long does the compressor still do its job? And of course, on the... 1176, because that's how it was on the original URA and all that stuff. Um, the controls are completely reversed. So a this isn't a short release, but this is something like this. You'll have to just know that it's counterintuitive and not what you think it is. Okay, go play. So when she just played slower, you could see that the light remained red, which means right now the release is slow. 
So it, it was falling under the threshold, but the compressor was still compressing. It was still pretending it was above the threshold. So uh, it was keep, it kept on compressing even though it fell under. If the release is fast, it'll be green much sooner and stop compressing. So play the same thing again. I'm going to make the release uh, fa uh, fast. So just so you understand that, okay? I'm going to take a look now at the preamp and maybe stacking compressors for, I mean, it's already compressing the shit out of things, uh, but why not? Just for shits and giggles, instead of the beautiful Vola TNC that Vanessa is playing, thank you, Vola, um, I'm using this uh, Heritage Custom Core, uh, kind of weird, bursty thing. It's a Custom Core Artisan Age. So why not? I'm going to go in the middle for some spankitude. Um... <laughs> So I could stack that with an LA2A right here. So the LA2A has release which in normality it doesn't. So just let you know. <laughs> And now I'm going to stack it. Something like that. Do you know how to play that? Pull me under. Uh, yeah, right. So you don't know how to play pull me under. I, you know help! I, I did, but uh, it was like a long time ago. So apparently pull me under is one of the uh, songs where uh, Petrucci used two compressors stacked because he really wanted that clean tone just be like never ending in just these super long beautiful notes and that's how he apparently did it. Something like this, I don't know how to play it. Now, when, once both are on and I want to set which one I'm controlling, use the middle switch. So right now I could go to a Dynacomp there. notes forever but again be careful with the noise floor and of course if i add a drive in front of it like the triumph from wampler does it make a lot of sense i don't think it does because drives naturally compress then you're bringing out a lot of the noise but i mean a drive actually does compress itself but why not why not why not turn that on <laughs>
Let's stay there. We're going to check out the preamp section now. <laughs> It is, it is like a two preamp thing on consoles and stuff. But again, it's if you're pushing it, this is of course the virtual version of it. If you're pushing it, you're getting drive sounds and these are very smooth. <laughs> Let's go into the app and push some of the frequency thingies. Let's see if it's still responding. It, it Wow! It's still connected! That's amazing! So I'm gonna go minus six on the low EQ. Plus six. I'm going to push plus six on the high EQ. So it's minus six on low and plus six on high. I love it. Let's gain. So off is all the way to the left. That is nice with that top end boost and a little bit leaner in the low end, especially with this guitar. great thing is if you're going to exclusive so it's either or right now you can actually switch between two completely different settings so let's gonna go gonna go for full-on Dynacomp and a lot of compression there And I can set up the EQ on the second compressor differently. And we're going to go 1176. So now I've got this funky... And here, super thick chords that last forever. See, much, much more audible. So in that sense, it has presets, right, Vanessa? Can't we see that as like two presets? I would say so too. I'm, I'm uh, like confused because uh, a compressor where I, I, I don't really wish to have like in a live situation 
to have uh, two different comps. Uh, there they have presets, and in the other pedals that we just did, uh, where it absolutely makes sense, like for delay and reverb, they don't. Which don't is, ask, don't question the ways of the UA. They are weird people that see priorities in where they're not. What do we know? Okay. We know shit. We know shit. They, they, UA knows things. So I'm going to go with, uh, we, 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 we've covered it. It's the max. It's first of all, make it max. Leslie, thank you. And, um, it's a dual compressor, 610 preamp. It's all the goodness of classic sounds. There's, other than the fact that it's a modern pedal doing it all digital and all that, sound-wise, you can forget about it, uh, that it's all digital. And it's it brings you all the dirt and all the goodness and all the, like the LA-2A has got that raunchy compression sound if you wanted that. But that preamp really adds grit. It's all there. It is a compressor and preamp for almost 400 bucks obviously there's cheaper ones out there but technically is two of them and, and the sounds are good what else do you want to know nothing now you can decide whether to buy it or not you can use my links below to toman or sweetwater which really helps me if you want a stupid shirt like this there's mr google links which don't pay me but i get shirts so thank you for that uh thanks vanessa for hanging out thank you leslie for switching thanks ua for commissioning this video ua UA? UA. I said it in German. And uh, animals at the end. Father, I have lost my way. I left the path I went astray